The third secret of Fatima, one of the greatest religious mysteries of the 20th century, shook the Catholic world when it was finally revealed after decades of being kept hidden. Handwritten and sealed in an envelope by Sister Lucia, the secret was only opened in 2000 by the Vatican, after a 40-year delay. However, many believe the text released was not the full truth. Could there be a significant portion yet to be unveiled? Witnesses' accounts hint at a collapse of faith and internal crises within the Catholic Church, leaving many curious about the true secret hidden within Sister Lucia's letter. Let's take a closer look at what's unfolding. Sister Lucia, the young child to whom Mother Mary appeared in Fatima, was given three secrets. In 1941, she revealed the first two secrets at the request of the local bishop at the time. But the third secret she was hesitant to reveal, as she was unsure whether God willed it or not, so she chose not to reveal it. However, in 1943, Sister Lucia fell very ill, and the bishop ordered her to put it into writing. Lucia obeyed and wrote it down, sealing it in an envelope not to be opened until 1960, when it would appear clearer. However, when 1960 finally came, the Vatican issued a press release stating that it was most probable the secret would remain forever under absolute seal. It was only on the 26th of June 2000, 40 years after the date when it was meant to be released, that the Vatican published the third secret, a vision of the Holy Father and other religious figures walking up a steep mountain, passing through a city of ruins, where at the top they were shot by a group of soldiers, However, critics claim that the text released by the Vatican is not the real third secret, or, at the very least, not the full secret. Their reasons are based on the following. First, Sister Lucia mentioned writing it on one sheet of paper, while the text of the third secret released by the Vatican is handwritten on four sheets of paper. Father Joaquin Alonso, the official Fatima archivist for 16 years, reports in his book, that Lucia tells us she wrote it on a single sheet. Another reason is the indication that the third secret was written in the form of a signed letter to the Bishop of Laria, while the text of the third secret released by the Vatican is not written in letter form. So if what was released by the Vatican in 2000 was not the real third secret of Fatima, then what is the real third secret? Many closely associated with Fatima and the Vatican have spoken on what the real essence of the last secret is. Cardinal Chiappi, who read the third secret and was personal papal theologian to Popes John XXIII, Paul VI, and John Paul II, said, In the third secret, it is foretold, among other things, that the great apostasy in the Church will begin at the top. In 1984, Bishop Venancio of Leria Fatima made a declaration that the secret of Fatima speaks neither of atomic bombs nor nuclear warheads, nor perish missiles, nor SS-20. Its contents concern only our faith, the Catholic faith. To identify the secret with catastrophic announcements or nuclear holocaust is to deform the meaning of the message. Reverend Dr. Luigi Vila, who attended the Second Vatican Council between 1962 and 1965, was shown a copy of the Third Secret. Missing from the Vatican's explanation, he said, was a portion of the secret that predicted the fall of the modern Catholic Church. Nevertheless, Father Villa said the main impetus of the original secret he viewed over 35 years ago was a prediction by the Holy Virgin that there would be an unbelievable total doctrinal and moral collapse of the establishment Catholic Church. Something Vatican officials are not going to admit, he said. Cardinal Silvio Audi, Secretary of Archbishop Angelo Roncalli, later Pope John XXIII, explained his own theory concerning the contents of the Third Secret of Fatima. He said, What happened in 1960 that might have been seen in connection with the Secret of Fatima? The most important event is, without a doubt, the launching of the preparatory phase of the Second Vatican Council. Therefore, I would not be surprised if the secret had something to do with the convocation of Vatican II. When asked why he believed that, Adi responded, in part from the attitude Pope John showed during our conversation. I deduced, but it is only a hypothesis, that the secret might contain a part that could have a rather unpleasant ring to it.
John XXIII had convened the council with the precise intention of directing the forces of the church toward the solution of the problems that concern all of humanity, beginning from within. That is, he intended the work to begin with the evangelical perfection pursued by consecrated persons. But we all know that, despite the great merits of the council, many sad things have also taken place. These sad things are not due to the council, but they took place in conjunction with the council. I am thinking, for example, of the number of priests who have abandoned the priesthood. It is said that there have been 80,000. One only has to recall the anguish with which the Holy Father, Paul VI, in 1968, cried out against the auto-demolition taking place in the church. Satan's smoke has made its way into the temple of God through some crack. Adi said the third secret was not about a supposed conversion of Russia, but concerned the revolution within the Catholic Church. The Blessed Virgin was alerting us against apostasy in the Church. So many innovations were born after Vatican II that they appeared to constitute a true internal revolution. As Cardinal Adi said, if we look back, the only big news in the Catholic Church in 1960, the year the Blessed Virgin told Sister Lucia to reveal the third secret to the world, was the founding of the Vatican II Council and the reformation of the Catholic Church. It is for these reasons that many believe Vatican II is the likely fulfillment of what was predicted in the third secret. Before we delve deeper into this discussion, it's crucial to emphasize that our objective here is not to advocate for any specific viewpoint, but rather to explore the narratives and interpretations that people have been discussing around this topic. There has been great interest in the visions of Fatima. What we understand about those visions makes a significant difference as to whether or not, in these last days, we will be deceived. In 1917, three children, pastors in Portugal, reported having visions of the Virgin Mary who revealed prophecies that have since been fulfilled. Two of these predictions have already come to pass, which has left many wondering about the third prophecy, a global catastrophe. As the year 2024 progresses, speculation grows as to whether this prophecy will be fulfilled. Number one, the three prophecies of Fatima are a series of apocalyptic predictions and prophecies said to have been given to Lucia Santos and her cousins Jacinta and Francisco Marto during a Marian apparition that began on May 13, 1917. The three children claimed that they were visited by the Virgin Mary six times between May and October 1917. The apparition is now popularly known as Our Lady of Fatima. Lucia explained that on July 13, 1917, the Virgin Mary entrusted three predictions to the children. Two were revealed in 1941 at the request of Bishop José Alves Correa da Silva to aid in a book's publication about Jacinta. Lucia hesitated to reveal the third prophecy, unsure if God had authorized it. In 1943, the bishop ordered her to write it down and seal it, not to be opened until 1960. The text was published by Pope John Paul II in 2000, but some believe it wasn't fully disclosed. The three prophecies involve hell, World War I, World War II, and the persecution of Christians. Lucia continued to report visions throughout her life, writing more details in her 1941 memoir. Number two, the first revelation follows the French prophet, Mélanie Calva, who saw Our Lady of La Salette in 1846 and wrote the prediction of that event almost 20 years later. Lucia wrote, that the prophecy has three parts, the first two of which she revealed in 1941. The third, however, was not written until January 3, 1944. It is not really what we could consider a secret in our common understanding. It is important to note that this is because, in reality, they are not so much prophecies of Fatima as the divination of Fatima. The first prophecy was of hell. Lucia wrote that the Blessed Virgin showed the children what hell was like, with all the suffering that it caused. As the souls who were there experienced, the vision lasted only a second, 
but the children said it was almost unbearable, which led to great confidence in Mary's promise to lead her devotees to Christ to save souls from this great eternal suffering. On the other hand, the second revelation is more like what we believe a prophecy implies. In this revelation, the Blessed Virgin shows the little children a revelation in which they learn that the First World War, which was occurring during the time of the visions, will end. However, another world war occurred under the papacy of Pius. The third vision of Fatima has long been a source of intense speculation and intrigue, especially given its ominous content. Sister Lucia, who had been entrusted with this divine foresight, faced a profound dilemma regarding its disclosure. Although she was instructed by the Virgin Mary not to reveal the third vision, in August 1941, Lucia refrained from including it in her memoirs. In 1943, Bishop Silva, who had been a key figure in the Fatima revelations, fell gravely ill with flu and pleurisy. Concerned about the potential loss of the vision's content if Lucia were to die, he requested that she document the third revelation to ensure it was preserved. Despite her own illness, Lucia struggled with this directive, torn between her vow of Carmelite obedience and the explicit instructions she had received from Mary. In mid-October 1943, Bishop Silva issued a formal written order for Lucia to record the prophecy. Yet, Lucia continued to wrestle with her conscience. It wasn't until early January 1944, when the Virgin Mary reappeared to her and instructed her to write down the prophecy as directed by the bishop, but to withhold personal interpretations, that Lucia complied. On January 3, 1944, Lucia documented the third part of the vision under the authority of Bishop Silva and the Holy Mother. The sealed envelope containing this revelation was then handed over to Bishop Silva, where it remained secure until 1957. When the envelope was eventually sent to Rome, Canon Galamba, an advisor to the Bishop of Lyria, reportedly refused to open it. Lucia had made it a condition that the envelope be opened and the contents revealed either upon her death or by 1960, whichever came first. After years of anticipation, the third vision was publicly announced by Cardinal Angelo Sodano on May 13, 2000. This was 83 years after the first appearance of the Lady to the Children in Cova de Iria, and 19 years following the failed assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II. The revelation, which had been shrouded in secrecy and speculation for decades, was finally made known to the world, but its unsettling and mysterious nature continued to provoke significant debate and analysis. Number three, Cardinal Sodano implied that the revelation was about the persecution of Christians in the 20th century, which culminated in the failed assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II on May 13, 1981, the 64th anniversary of the first appearance of Our Lady of Fatima. Some Catholics question the idea of a prediction already fulfilled, the text of the third prophecy, according to the Vatican, was published on June 26, 2000. The Catholic Church has allowed the last part of the message that the Blessed Virgin appeared to reveal to the three children in Fatima, Portugal, in 1917, to be made public. At the heart of the Fatima revelations, one child who lived through these tumultuous times was Sister Lucia, a cloistered nun residing in a Portuguese monastery. Her experiences spanned from the mid-20th century into the new millennium, during which she was a crucial figure in conveying the divine messages she received. Lucia's first audience with the Pope was with Pope Pius V. Over the ensuing decades, from 1950 to 2000, the messages she carried painted a dire picture of the world's future. The vision prophesied a time when humanity's disregard for divine commandments would lead to widespread suffering. It foretold the proliferation of destructive weapons, the potential annihilation of half the human race, and an escalation of conflicts, including a war against Rome and internal strife among religious orders. Natural disasters would become a hallmark of this period, with smoke, hail, floods, earthquakes, and severe weather patterns impacting the planet. 
these events were set to unfold before 2010. The vision offered a chance for redemption through divine mercy for those who chose to believe, contrasting with the grim fate awaiting those who lacked charity and failed to love their neighbors as Christ had taught. The revelations were a profound call to embrace Jesus Christ, highlighting that, despite divine aid, those who remained unfaithful would face severe consequences. Father Augustine, residing in Fatima, recounted that Pope Paul VI granted him permission to visit Sister Lucia, who, by then, lived in seclusion within her monastery, rarely receiving visitors. This period was marked by significant global and spiritual turmoil, as outlined in Lucia's messages, which remained shrouded in secrecy for many years. Number 4. Father Augustine said that he received her very dismayed. She told him that Our Lady was very sad, because no one seemed to be interested in her revelation of 1917. Although the righteous walked along a narrow path, the evil people walked along a wide path that led them directly to their destruction. Lucia seemed more than convinced that the punishment would come very soon. Many souls would be lost, and many nations would disappear from the earth. But in the midst of all this, if men reflected, prayed, and practiced good works, there were many possibilities that the world could be saved. However, if men persisted in their evil, the world would be lost forever. The time has come for everyone to transmit the message of our Blessed Virgin to their family, friends, and the entire world. It is hoped that the third prophecy occurs between 2024. As for the remedy, people are urged to start praying, doing penance, and making sacrifices. It seems that the world is in the last minute of the last day, and catastrophes are near. Due to this, many who were far from the church will return to the open arms of the Church of Jesus Christ. Humans are curious beings by nature. The part of the revelation that attracted the most attention is the one that has to do with the murder of a great bishop dressed in white. The forecast of a bishop dressed in white, presumed to be the Pope, who was killed by bullets and arrows, was naturally assigned to the failed assassination attempt on the life of Pope John Paul II. But some people claim that this cannot be the event since the Pope did not die in the attempt, and the bishop in white in the vision does die. Therefore, some claim that the assassination of the Pope is a prediction of a future event. However, at the time the text of the third vision was published, Cardinal Ratzinger, one of the most important theologians of the 20th century, who would become Pope Benedict, further explained that the purpose of the vision is not to show a film of an irrevocably fixed future. Its meaning is exactly the opposite. Its objective is to mobilize the forces of change in the right direction. Therefore, fatalistic explanations of prophecy must be discarded such as the statement that the future murderer of May 13, 1981, was simply an instrument of the divine plan, guided by providence, and could not, therefore, have acted freely, or other similar ideas in circulation. Rather, the vision speaks of dangers, and how we could save ourselves from them. This, however, did little to calm the enthusiasm around this third revelation. Number 5. In the last part of the vision, it was revealed that a great war would happen. This war will destroy everything. Darkness will fall upon us for 72 hours, three days in a row, and a third of humanity that survives this darkness and sacrifice will begin living in a new era. They will be good people. On a very cold night, 10 minutes before midnight, a great earthquake will shake the earth for eight hours. This will be the third sign that God is the one who rules the world. The righteous and those who spread the faith should not fear the message of the Lady of Fatima. What you probably don't know is that the vision of Fatima is one of a kind. There are others, but curiously, they are all interconnected. The connection between Fatima and the divination of Akita is due to the rapidity of Cardinal Ratzinger's positive response to the prophecy. Bishop Ido surmised that the Cardinal, who was at that time the custodian of the Third Vision of Fatima, 
must have recognized the similarity of the messages from Akita to that of Fatima. The authenticity of the messages was unquestionable, so the pastoral letter was quickly approved for dissemination. The connections between the messages from Fatima, 1917, Amsterdam, 1945, and Akita, 1973, are notable, with each occurring 28 years apart. Adding another 28 years brings us to 2001, the start of the third millennium. Pope John Paul II suggested that the Fatima vision might be fulfilled as we approached this new era. Sister Inez, through her guardian angel, learned the Fatima prayers and noted the link between the apparitions of Our Lady of Akita and Fatima, as both occurred on the 13th of the month. The last appearance of Our Lady to Sister Agnes on October 13, 1973, was on the anniversary of the Miracle of the Sun in Fatima, leading Bishop Ito to view Akita as a continuation of Fatima's message. The apocalyptic content of these messages includes an angel with a fiery sword, which Our Lady stopped, leading to the call for penance. Sister Lucia clarified that these warnings reflect humanity's own transgressions rather than direct divine punishment. Despite warnings of disasters, a massive earthquake in Japan was not predicted, but occurred later, adding to the ongoing debate and criticism about the completeness of the Vatican's published vision. Number 6. The Controversial Secret in the Vatican Before the 1930s, the main focus of devotion to Our Lady of Fatima was the need to pray the Rosary for the end of the First World War and world peace. It should be noted that the visions of Fatima at the time were not well known outside of Portugal and Spain. After the publication of Sister Lucia's memoirs, starting in 1935, Fatima was considered to present the victory of the Blessed Virgin over communism. On February 8, 1960, the Portuguese news agency Agencia Nacional de Información reported that the third vision of Fatima would likely remain sealed indefinitely sparking widespread speculation. According to the New York Times, this speculation ranged from fears of global nuclear catastrophe to concerns about deep divisions within the Roman Catholic Church that could lead to rival papacies. On May 2, 1981, Lawrence James Dowey hijacked a plane, demanding Pope John Paul III reveal the third vision. The Vatican's subsequent release of the text stirred controversy in Portugal where both clergy and laity were upset that the text had been read in Rome rather than at the Fatima sanctuary where the events occurred. The Times reported on June 29, 2000, that the revelation denying apocalyptic predictions angered the Portuguese church, which had kept the details secret for 50 years. Critics, including Italian journalist Antonio Soy, argue that the four-page handwritten document published by the Vatican in 2000 is incomplete or not the true prophecy. Father Joaquin Alonso, a former Fatima archivist, claimed Lucia had originally written the prophecy on a single sheet of paper. In May 2007, Cardinal Tarsicio Bertone demonstrated on Italian television that Lucia's document was indeed a single sheet, divided twice into four sections, with the Vatican's 2000 release reproducing only one section. Further debate centers on whether the prophecy was originally written as a signed letter to the Bishop of Laria, while the Vatican's released text was not in letter form. Lucia had confirmed this detail in a 1946 interview with Father Yongan. Father Yongan asked Lucia when the time of the third prophecy would come. She replied that she had communicated the third part in a letter to the Bishop of Laria. The time has come and permission has been granted from Pope John Paul II to reveal it to the children of God. This is not to create panic, but to make people aware of this important message, so that everyone can be prepared. According to the message, the Virgin told Lucia to go and tell the world directly, whose authenticity there was no doubt. Therefore, he approved his pastoral letter for immediate dissemination among the faithful. To better appreciate this connection between these messages, between those of Fatima in 1917, Amsterdam in 1945, and here in 1973, 
Keep in mind that Amsterdam occurred 28 years after Fatima, and Akita occurred 28 years after Amsterdam. If we add another 28 years, it would be the year 2001, the first year of the third millennium. The late Pope John Paul II wrote in his book, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, that it seemed to him that, as we approach the third millennium, the vision of Our Lady of Fatima given to the shepherd children would be fulfilled. The second correlation is the connection provided by heaven. Sister Inez learned from her guardian angel the prayers of Fatima that were dictated to the children of Fatima and also by the angel of Portugal. The apparitions of Our Lady of Akita and those of Fatima occurred on the 13th of the month. Her last appearance to Sister Agnes was on October 13, 1973, on the anniversary of the Miracle of the Sun in Fatima. This led Bishop Ito to conclude that the message of Akita was a continuation of the message of Fatima. The third correlation is the apocalyptic content of the three messages. At Fatima, with its third vision now fully revealed, we see an angel with a sword of fire about to burn the earth, when Our Lady, in her splendor, stopped him, which made the angel shout three times, penance, 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 while pointing to the world. Sister Lucia, when the late Pope John Paul the Ade asked her to clarify this vision, said that it is not God who is punishing us in this way. It is humanity, changed by its transgressions, bringing upon itself this embrace of the earth. Lucia added that, if this has not yet happened, humanity, through its sins of immorality and injustice, especially against the poor, is slowly but surely approaching this eventuality. Although Our Lady had warned of great disasters that would strike humanity, there was no mention of a massive earthquake that would affect Japan. This happened ten years later, when civil conflict broke out, leading to a massacre that wiped out a large part of the population. Although there is still much debate surrounding the last prophecy, it is also a central topic of criticism. Some maintain that the real vision was not published by the Vatican. Let us also remember that Canon Galamba, advisor to the Bishop of Leria, was heard saying that when the bishop refused to open the letter, Lucia made him promise that it would be opened and read to the world when she died, or in 1960, whichever came first. Antonio, however, questioned to what extent the word letter should be strictly interpreted. And it is also assumed that the text of the forecast contains words attributed to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The text of the third prediction released by the Vatican does not include any words attributed directly to the Blessed Virgin Mary. According to Soxy, the third divine prophecy might have begun with the phrase, in Portugal, the dogma of faith will always be preserved, etc., which Lucia included in her fourth memoir, but was only noted as a footnote in the Vatican's publication. Lucia herself had stated in her fourth memoirs that she would not disclose the third part. Critics argue that the document, as released, omits critical elements regarding the apocalypse, apostasy, and satanic infiltration within the church. In an interview featured in Jesus magazine on November 11, 1984, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger addressed the matter of the third Fatima revelation and the reasons behind its limited disclosure. Ratzinger affirmed that he had read the prophecy and explained that it underscores the serious threats to faith and Christian life. He clarified that the decision to withhold the full text was made to prevent sensationalism and the potential misinterpretation of the religious messages contained within. In a 1998 interview conducted within the Vatican, Howard D., a former Philippine ambassador to the Vatican, provided additional context. He disclosed that Cardinal Ratzinger had confirmed to him that the messages from the apparitions at Akita and Fatima were essentially aligned with the third prophecy. According to this perspective, the third revelation is seen as a reflection of deep internal conflicts within the Church. It foretells significant strife among cardinals and bishops, and even predicts the desecration of churches and altars. These elements of division and turmoil resonate with some interpretations of the third revelation's content, depicting a period of profound upheaval and challenge for the Church. 
On May 13, 2000, Cardinal Sodano announced the publication of the third prediction, suggesting it related to 20th century Christian persecution and the 1981 assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II. Malachi Martin argued that the prediction makes sense only if there is a total apostasy in the Church. In a 1980 interview, John Paul II explained that, due to its gravity, his predecessors had delayed its release to avoid provoking communism. John Paul II also stated that if the prediction involves catastrophic events, it may no longer be meaningful to publish it, as knowing it could lead to unnecessary fear and responsibility. He emphasized the need for prayer and surrender to Christ as remedies for impending trials. He urged Christians to remain strong and attentive to the rosary. However, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger later denied that John Paul II made these comments. Lucia, when asked about the third prediction, linked it to the Gospels and the Apocalypse, citing Revelation 12.4, which Pope John Paul II referenced in his 2000 homily in Fatima. We hope this exploration has deepened your faith and understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share it with your friends and family, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your insights. Don't miss our other two videos, which will appear on the screen next. They're packed with even more intriguing revelations. Thanks for watching.